Hello and welcome to Prime Lenses. I'm Ian. Each week I speak to a photographer about three lenses that have meant something to them on their photographic journey. And my guest this week is Becca Fasacci. Becca is an Emmy Award winning photographer, videographer and lifelong learner. And I've enjoyed her content on the internet for years and been lucky enough to chat with her on and off about cameras and gadgets and all sorts of stuff. But when I was starting to plan this show, I knew she was one of the people I'd want to speak to. She recently went independent and is able for the first time to make whatever she wants on her own terms. You can find her on YouTube now where she's taking tech outdoors and her approach is clearly resonating because she's already attracted over 100,000 subscribers. I am delighted to say that this is my conversation with Becca Versace. It, it's it's like when I'm when I'm using this mic and I um because I'm on Teams all day for work, and so the team can't hear my keyboard and stuff because the software is doing the clever stuff. But when I'm on this, I'm pretty sure it comes through like clack. I can clack. hear it. Yeah. So yeah, um, but in a, but yeah. in a really beautiful way. I love that. Oh, I it's love brilliant. It's it's um it's a proper '80s Apple um, ADB keyboard. Um, oh shit! Com- how did you how did you get it? There we go. There's the there's that bad boy there. Yes. Com- complete with the proper little apple thing on the corner. Um, uh, so how does it, it how does it patch it? It connects to my computer now via two USB adapters. Um, <laughs> a little so, dongle train. Yeah. So it has a a, a USB um, a, like an ADB to USB adapter. Um, oh yeah. Which was the first first thing, and now that goes into a USB C hub to go and i uh yeah it's it's really cool and the the adapter it ages it because the the first stage adapter that just takes it to usb a is um is it off of the early 2000s so it's translucent plastic and it's that kind of slightly textured and molded it's like this has to look good next to a g3 tower you know that that yes. era of of fine Macintosh computer, um, so yeah. Fine, fine Macintosh computer is exactly the way I would describe that as well. Yeah, they Incredible. were good. My friend James, who occasionally gets a shout out on the show, um, I remember he. I was at university when I met him, and he got the G4 dual processor, 1.25 gigahertz, which was in the day was like. Sick. Yeah, it must have felt fast. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was the mirror door, and I just remember I got. I was in a lecture, and I. Mr. Call and the voicemail was James going, the Tower of Power has arrived. And I I skipped my next lecture to go and hang out at James's and we were just like zipping and unzipping files just to see how fast this Hell thing was. Hell yeah. Oh my God. So good. So yes. cool. Oh man. That Opening was an gifts, era. Zipping and un- unzipping files. Love it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm stoked to be here today. I'm stoked. Oh, I, this yeah. is always such, the episodes are incredible. Thank you for putting them on YouTube um that's and, all you and yeah especially the <laughs> love it um love to uh start change um and then yeah the my favorite one though really like the ones you did with um james barham i i just loved that so i mean i love james he's just such a thinker yeah. um but yeah it was just i i had pulled so many quotes into like my notes app after that mm. like oh, good. you know i just he said so many smart things and I just, I just really love that conversation. Maybe it's your accents. I don't know, but I mean, I do joke that some sometimes my accent is a qualification in certain parts of the world. But I think, we, yeah, James <laughs> is just great company. That's the thing, and he yes. just really knows he knows his onions in a way that there's there's no hiding it. You know, when you when you talk to some people, that you just it's just clear. Um, did you listen to the episode with Doug Menway? Because he's, he's great value. That, is that a, the latest one? Way. No, no, no. That's um, a little while back. Because Doug photographed okay. um, in in the Valley in the 90s and early 2000s. Yeah. He photographed Steve Jobs' company next after Apple, then when, before he went back to Apple. And the book uh, is called Fearless Genius. And it's phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Like it's got loads of photos. He's got these incredible black and white photos of like Steve Jobs and like a young Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates and you know that, that whole period. There's an incredible picture. It's on the back cover of the book. Uh, it's David Hockney being shown the first version of Photoshop with a dashend on his knee 
and his paper in his pocket and he's just sitting there just playing with his dog while he's being shown photoshop and like you know fast forward awesome. decades later and like he was like drawing exhibitions on ipads you know like just he's yeah. he continues to be mad so yeah dog's good value um i mean they're all good ali's episode's good yeah um but yeah, yeah. some some guy named Varen he turned up at some point you know yeah 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 his was good too yeah, yeah. he's awesome so we catch you because i think because we, i've been talking to you like on and off. I loved, by the way, thank you so much for referencing the, the in the Rico GR versus the 100V video. That How was could superb. I not? Yes, you were so persistent. <laughs> <laughs> well, it did, I did a little Snoopy dance when I watched that and I made Alice watch that bit at least three times. Because um, like, no, 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 I think that's us. Um, but yeah, it's because it was awesome. a, it's such a cool camera and we've been talking about stuff like that for ages. And like the pandemic yeah. in an odd way seems like a long time ago now, even though it's not really very long ago but it's very far in the rear view mirror um yeah but yeah and then you've moved around stuff how how are you finding now like you're you're out in the brave new world patreon's launched youtube channels doing tremendously well you're over a hundred thousand subscribers already like hell yeah. to the year big that yeah. means you get a big button for your wall how's that feeling i got it's yeah the button's not as big as it once was but it still feels extra big in my heart <laughs> um, just just put the lens closer <laughs> yes yeah yeah exactly um, it all feels really good um, and exciting. I'm just really happy to be here. That's that's what it boils down to. And I tell everyone this, the mm. good days are 200% better and the bad days are 200% worse, but I wouldn't change a thing. Um, yeah. And it just feels it just feels exciting. The other thing is every day I learn something new. And I was talking to my friend David Immel um, a couple of days ago and we were saying that if you're feeling stuck or bored or just not excited, just go learn something new. Learning is power. It is exciting. Yeah. Learning something new every day is just incredible, um, incredible feeling. And it, it's, mm. it's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's the key, isn't it? Is keeping it fresh and keeping it amateurish in a good way, you know, like uh, lifelong learning. I think that's the thing. I think as soon as you feel like you know it and there's no surprise to be had, then the joy will go out of it. And Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah and the yeah, surprise absolutely. is gone. You know, when you learn yeah. something new, you um, it opens your eyes to something that maybe you didn't think about every day before. And now you're thinking about them. Um, for yeah. example, my very good friend, Phil, who I worked at The Verge uh, with, we would travel mm. the world together and he's a big car guy. And everywhere we went, he'd be pointing out this car and that car, and he knew the history of every car and what this model number means. And mm. I would come home from these trips and I would be walking down the street being like, oh my gosh, that's this car. It has this history. And so when you learn something, you just open your eyes to something that you didn't see before. And that's exciting. Yeah. I love, I love kind of, I mean, I probably could have learned a language with the silly things that you pick up from stuff over there, but, it, but each of them is tied to a person and a time in your life. And like, I, yeah, I think, I think that's what's so powerful as well about these conversations being audio only, because I remember where I was when I listened to certain things and is it, oh, yeah. I feel it, they take, it takes you back a bit more somehow, you know, so you're a visual your person, ears. which I think I knew. Well, yeah, I mean, it's not, you don't accidentally invent a podcast about lenses, I guess, but yeah, I think, I think it is that I think. Yeah, the, it, it's it's connected to your senses. I think being in your ears is a really privileged place to be. And I'm really lucky that like I'm making something it's connecting people and get to talk to cool people. You know? Absolutely. And in that vein, I'm also such a visual person that if I think to do something or have any thought at all, and then I forget it, mm. I often go back to where I was and look at what I was looking at. And I can remember what it was. Like That's how visual based yes. I am. Right. No knotted handkerchiefs for you. It's all walk back to the place. Yeah, we gotta go. We gotta go back to the source, baby. Now that you're you're traveling around, you were you were at an event yesterday. Talk me through, if you can, a little bit the outdoors kind of testing stuff outside because we all know you as someone who, like, hey buds, we're testing buds or we're testing cameras or when we're out and about. But the I love how you've kind of you've made something for you that's yours. I think in the way that you talk about taking things outside. Yeah. Where did that come from? You've been mulling that for a long time or was that kind of a, a, an epiphany? Well, I was always the kid in high school that would ask the teacher if we could have class outside. Like it was like a running joke with like friends of mine. We like I was like, every day I'm going to ask the teacher if we can have class outside. 
Um, and the answer was always no. But when we wouldn't have class outside, I would always find myself just looking outside. I've always been drawn to the outdoors. Yeah. I just want to be out there. But where that, um, so there's that. And then you mix that with all other tech reviewers, for the most part, containing their reviews in their studios or their homes or their basements. Mm -hmm. And that's not where products are actually used. You know, we're out and about, we're like in the rain and we're in the mud and we're with friends and we're in bars and we're in bright places and dark places. Yeah. And so the idea was, I want to bring tech to where it actually lives in our world outside. Yeah. Um, and then the fact that I just naturally want to be outside. So if I, if I name my brand this, then I have to be outside, unfortunately, fortunately. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, that's it's really great, though, I think, because that ties with also where you want to be right at the moment. Like 100%. you've made the move, you're in a more rural place, you know, most of the time you're still you're close enough to town, but you're not cutting yourself off from it. But walking back and forth, eating apples and filming stuff on an iPod Nano, like that seems like a pretty. Oh, that's the dream, that's, isn't it? <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, yeah, I loved that video, by the way. It was really nice. I'm um, Matthias Berling, who was on earlier in the in the series. Um, he's got an iPod Nano. He's been saying that he's going to send my way because I was talking about getting one before I went away and then your video came out. So I have to I have to get one of these. It's such a shame that the battery's so hard to replace, though. Oh, my God. It's, impo it's impossible to replace. I wouldn't dare do it. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it's they're ticking time bombs almost literally, um, which is a shame. But I guess that was like, you know, the problem. It's still the problem with tech is how utterly hard it is to repair at times. Um but, but yeah, definitely get one. It, it'll take you right back. If, if you were an iPod user way back when, it's like that that scroll wheel. Oh my gosh, I could just go in circles. And then I also highly it's recommend, so good. so good. I highly recommend buying one. I've found a lot of iPods. Um, you know, the culture here in, in New York City is like when you don't want stuff, you leave it out on your stoop for other people to take. And I've acquired a few iPods that way. So you can always be on the lookout for them there. But they also are the perfect time capsule. When you open someone else's iPod, it's like the music they listen to. Sometimes there's photos or videos or shows on them, and you can see uh, a look into a very particular time in history, which is cool. Yeah, it's really nice, actually. I, I think of um, working in games. I have, I mean, I have my iPod on my desk and I use it all the time, but it's um, also like games consoles and stuff like that. Like my Switch is a time capsule, effectively. Yep. because i know that my 3ds was the same and the like there's it's just it's got the things on it from the time and it will work until it doesn't work anymore but that's that's where it all is and i sort of love that but also it's weird because i, I was talking for last week's last week i spoke to kai who will be this week's episode because you're the week after so t what is time but this guy kai o'connell who who's done a um a lot of thinking about the lost art of the family album right and i feel like the iPod is kind of the last piece of technology that we had, that kind of era of technology, which wasn't locked and wasn't hidden. So you can pick up Bob on the street's iPod and immediately it tells you something about that person. Everything else now has touch ID, face ID, pin symbols that you have to draw on the screen. And so immediately we're locking away our most important memories that we might want to share with people, but they're trapped now on these devices that we may or may not be able to get into in the future yeah. like that ipod is kind of like th 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 there was a step change where suddenly it's like these things are personal they've got important things on now we have to lock them down you know yeah i haven't thought about the family photo album in a really long time this is i'm mm. suddenly getting many ideas for videos and projects um that's such a cool you're right it's not locked you can just open it and be in somebody's family yeah. Um, and I love photo albums. I actually love looking through like strangers photo albums as weird as that might mm. sound. It's kind of like voyeuristic and a very like scratches an itch in a weird way. Um, but, uh, and, and something that I love about Polaroid cameras, this is related to photo albums. Mm. I know I'm starting to go off the rails, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to take, I'm oh, taking the, I'm taking it. the ship there. Um, something I love about Polaroid cameras is I have like Polaroid specific albums and there's just like nowhere else to put Polaroids. So I had, they naturally mm. make their own photo albums. And you know, those eight shots are from one day in time and it's a beautiful thing to flip through. Um, yeah, we all need yeah. to be making more photo albums. Yes, definitely. Uh, um, so I'm obsessed currently, this will not work well for audio, but I'll show you because I've started going back to notebooks. I've done over a decade oh, yeah. of drawing and writing everything on an iPad, basically. Wow. Yeah. And there just came a point where I was like, 
even before there was an iPad Pro, I was drawing, I was taking notes on iPads with like bamboo styluses and all that sort of stuff, just yep. trying to make it work. And then gradually over time, it got more and more easy to the, but to the point where like, it just started to feel a bit soulless mm -hmm. and I just was looking for fun. And so I've gone back to notebooks. And so my desk is now covered in like, there's a work notebook with stickers on yep. and cause I'm not in the studio very often. So I have a reminder on the back that I've printed a little thermal printer of like who's on which floor. So I can remember which project is where, when I'm in the buildings, so I'm running around yeah. and then I'm, I've got this, this thermal printer that prints um like receipt prints you know yes. like in, like a till receipt but you connect it to your phone look at the aesthetic of that oh my god i love it it's, it takes photos and turns them into these like like vga <laughs> almost dithered kind of black and white pictures i'll send you a proper picture afterwards i'm obsessed with that aesthetic now it's like what will this photograph look like but dithered in a like a one bit grayscale it's just wild that's so awesome. cool i highly recommend them and they're like they're like 20 bucks on amazon oh no they connect, they connect to your phone to buy one. <laughs> oh, what have you done yet okay i know but for send me your affiliate incredible <laughs> sure sure yeah like like we have one of those yet um it's uh but yeah they're really cool i highly recommend because i've got you know i've got polaroids in here too um i just whenever i travel like when i come to the states i've got the polaroid things in there as well yeah. like fun little guys hiding but um awesome. yeah the, the the receipt print is brilliant and it's like you have a little crafting project on a train or whatever way yes. <laughs> people just look at it like what are you doing yeah that's awesome <laughs> very cool. yeah i'm a big i'm i am a big like uh physical material lover like mm. my fridge is full of magnets and photos and i'm constantly moving them around and making different collage with them and every year yeah. I do a mood board. I do many mood boards through the year, but I always do one on New Year's Eve and that's collage and cutting mm -hmm. things out and you're flipping through magazines. And I just love that tactile feel of creating in that way. It really feels like a break from everything else. I think especially because our lives are mediated now by screens and there's, you know, there's that joke of like, I spent the day looking at a screen so I could come through to a different room and look at a larger screen and then just before I went to bed while I was brushing my teeth I looked at the small screen again and then put it in my pocket and went to sleep yeah it's uh it's nice to kind of just give yourself a break even if it's not doing anything you know bad particularly but yeah that's well that's what David and I were also talking about when we were talking about you know getting a hobby and learning something new is that it feels like um, social media has really robbed people of hobbies because instead of like going home and working on your side project, you go home and you scroll, um, you know, yeah. and instead of like learning something new and then applying it, you just like scroll and you kind of learn about it, but then you get scrolling and doing something else. Um, so yeah, yeah, everybody start learning stuff and finding hobbies <laughs> by call to action. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like a, a, you've got a banner, but that takes us back, I guess, to your early videos in a fun way, because mm. you were talking like in some of your early ones about like, I'm doing this on Saturday and I've got to do this in between laundry and you know all this sort of stuff. Do you have friends say to you, like, how do you find the time? And, and how do you, because I get that now I do this and I don't think they realize how straightforward editing audio actually is, but yeah, obviously to the core. Well, you found it. I don't too, find it very still. straightforward. So God bless you. <laughs> The move to Audacity was the key. Mm. Um, I was using I was using Luma Fusion to start with. I was using a video editor. <laughs> That's, to, I know. Yeah. Well, I use <laughs> Premiere to like edit everything, even photos sometimes. Right. So I get. Yeah. It. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. is a safe place. No one's listening. Yeah. Yeah. Just just us and a few thousand other people. It's fine. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So yeah. how do, how do I find the time? I ask myself that question more than I think mm. anyone else does. I, everyone around me pretty much knows that I'm a workaholic. You know, work hard, play hard, go 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 go. Mm -hmm. um, I do manage to get eight hours of sleep every night. That's very important to me, mostly because it's important to my partner, and she has made me a much better, um, much better. Uh, I'm a good sleeper, but she has made sure that I get the proper amount of sleep. And that's really important. But otherwise yeah. I work all the time. <laughs> I work every day. Um, I usually mm -hmm. log on around nine or 10. And even on the weekends, I'll work till at least one or two. And then I log off and, you know, go do what I've got to do. Um, I don't think it's like the healthiest, you know, way. I think it's a sure path to burnout. But right now I'm so excited about what I'm doing mm. and I'm learning so much and every day is so different.
that it works for me. So I don't know how I find the yeah. time, but I'm finding it. Um, and, I, yeah. and I'm taking it and I'm using it. Yeah, I think that's, you know, it's a bit like when you find the time of day you're most productive as well. Yeah. You know, like if you're energized and excited by something and enthused, then you almost want to use that while you have it. Like enjoy yes. and use the momentum while it's there because you've done the hard yards, you've done the late nights, you've done the 3 a.m., none of this is making sense anymore we have to stop otherwise <laughs> we're like we're, we've just been editing the same 15 seconds over and over and over again like you know yeah. when you've done that you don't have to go back to that that sounds actually as much as it sounds like hard work it's yours and you can pour that energy into it and provided you know it's the time in your life right like this might not be forever but that's okay 100 percent 100 percent. but yeah. i also and i think that this comes across my work i hope it does at least I so love and find joy in what I'm making. And if I'm yeah. not, I usually stop and go do something else because the, you know, the final edit or whatever I'm making is not going to be good if I'm not having fun. Um, yeah. And so I'm, I'm very fortunate for that. And I, my biggest struggle is, well, my biggest worry, I should say, is maintaining that. So yeah. trying to protect it at all costs. You seem like you're at a point in your life where you've got the kind of, you know yourself better as well. Like there's not, you 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 don't accidentally leave a big established institution you've been at for a long time <laughs> without feeling probably like maybe the sleep's helping. Seems like getting a good solid amount of sleep over a certain period of time. Oh, maybe that's, you know. Sleep is every, if you're listening to this right now, do yourself a favor and start getting the proper amount of sleep. It is life-changing before i met my partner four years ago i was getting six hours of sleep a night and i thought that was fine i was like i feel fine and now that i'm getting eight hours of sleep i was not fine like three o'clock would roll around and i'd get really tired by like oh it's just because i need more coffee it's like no you just need to right. sleep more no. um, and i know that that's like a privilege there's a lot of folks who there isn't enough time in the day and they can't get that amount of sleep yeah. or they have trouble sleeping but do everything you can to get good sleep yeah yeah, no, I'm the same. No caffeine after like eleven for me is part of that. You know, things eleven like a.m. Just, I, yeah, I just stop drinking like coffee and stuff. Like I, I load up in the morning. Yeah. Like I have a couple of cups of coffee in the morning. Uh, we have like an espresso machine, and I, I top ask, it. I'll make my own make americano. It? Okay, nice. Yeah, so it's it's a sage bambino or something. It's pretty good. I have a friend who works in coffee. And I was like, I we stayed in an Airbnb that had a nice coffee machine. I was like, okay, I'm sold. I'd always done pour over or cafetiere type coffee. And then yep. having an espresso machine, I was like, this is pretty great, actually. Yeah. So Alice, that, that was like maybe five years ago. And Alice said, well, you know, why don't we get you one for your birthday? And I was like, that sounds brilliant. And so I asked him what was a good one. And he went, well, you know, you could, it was like cameras. When you talk to those people who are like deep in it. Yeah. And he's like depends do you want to spend a thousand dollars on it and i was like no no and he's like then buy this this is fine um and you go from there but uh yeah i i, I like it it's nice it's sort of there's a ritual to it as well which is nice. yes i love a coffee ritual i love a ritual at, at large mm. but start waking up and having like something you know set that you do that actually gives you something that yeah. energizes you oh there's nothing better it's nothing better and it's yours it's your time as well whether it's like five minutes or ten minutes or whatever it is that i think that Creating space for yourself, I think, is probably quite important. I think we all probably learned that over a couple of years of pandemic as well. Oh, right. absolutely. I can't leave these these four walls. I need to create some space. But yeah. I guess from creating space to kind of creating images and ritual and things like that, we could talk about one of your lenses because Ooh, it cool. feels like if when I when I make people choose three, uh, there's probably a little bit of ritual and stuff. So which which of your three? Because I've got. I've got tons of questions about one of them in particular, but which one would you like to start with? I was trying to remember this morning which ones I gave you, and I thought about going and looking, but then I thought maybe it'd be more fun if you just bring them up, and we'll go from there. Okay. Yeah, you pick. Cool. So, okay, well, let's go, uh, we'll go Canon EF100. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because that one, I don't think of 100 mil as a focal length. Yeah, because I'm a tourist and I play with photography, and so I'm I'm all your traditional focal lengths. I'm 28, I'm 35, uh, I'm 50, I'm maybe 90. So the hundred, yeah, where does that fit in for you? Like, how did you come across it and go, it's that one? I did not. 
If you talk to anyone who worked at The Verge pre-pandemic uh, on the mm -hmm. video team, they will have used this lens. It is like The Verge's favorite lens, at least it was. We used to shoot on Canon uh, C100s, and mm -hmm. my gut told me never to pick up that lens either at first. I mean, number one, the shape of it is funny. It's it's long. It's like a barrel. Um, it just looks like a, a piece of PVC pipe, really. It's, it's not <laughs> pretty. Um, and the ones that we had were often a little bit dinged up and broken because we use them so mm -hmm. much. And also 100 millimeters is such a strange focal length. I'm sure it's mm. one that if you're using a 70 to 200 millimeter lens, you might land on more than you think. But naturally, mm. I don't think there's anybody who would set it to 100 millimeters. Maybe some right. birders or wildlife folks. But for products, yeah. it is the most perfect focal length. Um, there's like just enough compression. Um, there's that lens is, is relatively sharp. Um, I think it has built-in stabilization. Um, mm -hmm. It's just so solid for products. And yeah. at The Verge, that, I mean, there's whole videos shot on that lens. I would also use it as a wide and a tight. Like I would get halfway across the studio to use it as a wide and get like a whole computer monitor. But then you can get really right. close and because it's a macro and get some like really nice details on the edges and such. I miss that lens. I don't yeah. really shoot um, Canon in that way anymore. Um, mm. But yeah, I really miss that lens. I do wonder, because you know, like um, old lenses have these kind of moments where suddenly it's the lens and everyone has to get it. And often it's when they either they stop making them or they get a bit older or whatever. Mm -hmm. I wonder whether 10 years from now, there's going to be some sort of renaissance of like, you know, like the Digicam craze where someone's going, like, what you need is a 5D, but a Mark One not a Mark II or three, and then one, you know, something like that, where they just go, they go full crazy, like, no, it's the old ones, the one you want, you know? Yeah, yeah, I wonder, I haven't ever talked to anybody outside of The Verge that loves that lens like we do. So if you're out there, if you love the Canon EF 100 millimeter macro, please tag me somewhere and just know that you exist too, because I don't know anyone else. It's one of those ones where you talk to the reps and they're like, and you're like, oh, I love this lens. And they go, do you? Yeah, exactly. You know, like even, even, the, even the people who are, whose job it is to sell it are like, yeah, I don't know about this yeah. one. Yeah, well, it's real. It's it, it's not super flattering for people. I, I have tried to shoot like people with it and it, there's just something not right <laughs> about it. Um, so I could see why most folks wouldn't use it. But if you shoot cell phones, earbuds, laptops, um yeah anything with a chip in it this is your lens right that's a good distinction actually i hadn't thought of it in those terms of like what it would do to a person it's weird i do have a verge video that i shot the stand-up with it on and i remember i shot the stand-up came back to the office i was editing it and my boss came over and was like don't do that again <laughs> it just looks like <laughs> we'll get away with it this time yeah the person looked like they were a million yards away from me and it was like why are they talking to the camera and yeah but that video exists. It's out there. Now, the challenge is now for people to go and see if they can work out which one it was. I would have to. Right, I, don't, even don't even I don't. Then... I do know. <laughs> I know who it was and I know where it was shot, but I don't remember what we were talking about. So even I would have trouble. Is the plan to carry on then is, is you know, you, you were talking in recent videos about having like notebook full of ideas and like you, the, the way you scribble stuff down. I've listened to like lots of interviews and conversations. You were great on waveform. I thought that was really, really Thank cool. You. That was so um, fun. Some guy. Some guy named David was there as well. He's all right. Yeah, he's um, all right. <laughs> he's fine. Like he's he's out there trying to find the widest possible film camera he can. Like just how wide. He's so dedicated to the cause, though, that it is. It's so yes. beautiful to watch and to be a part of. It's. I love it for him. I. That's that's my thing. Is yeah. like, if someone is really passionate bit passionate about something i can watch them talk mm. about it for hours even if i know nothing about it yeah. and david's yes. uh you know pano uh seeking out the widest camera and film stuff is just endlessly interesting because he's so involved in it yeah no he's brilliant what i loved about talking to him which i didn't realize as well was how he's not just cameras and film stuff he's he's just full breadth of you know like renaissance 
man in that way of like, oh, but you won't lose him in the detail on technical stuff. Like he, he can yeah. go deep on compression algorithms yes. in a way that I wasn't expecting. Right. And I was just like, oh, wow, you are the full package. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The ultimate nerd. It's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. It's very cool. Yeah. He and I were talking recently, one of his film photos that he took, um, I was talking to him about trying to get a print of it done oh, cool. like framed and sent over and we just couldn't find a way to ship it to scotland for less than a bazillion dollars yes and <laughs> sounds like you'll so have hard. to deliver it basically yeah in the in the end well okay so here's what we're going to do this is the road trip can okay. we can you know make it a, a remote i need to start a podcast festival in the highlands then oh. waveform can come and record so can you we can do the whole th I can see a path through this. I love it. I love it. Or let's yeah. just all go on vacation. <laughs> Forget well, okay. about working. Or we could do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That too. That too. We can, I mean, there's plenty to do around here. We can kick about in the heather. Um, and there's about 70 million distilleries and of various kinds. Within, oh my like, God. All right. Don't tempt me with a good time. We should probably, it's probably a good time to mention lens number two. So I am going to pick... Okay. The one that I was curious about oh. for the next one for us to talk to, because I was I was excited to see this. So my stepdad, Chris, granddad, Chris, who gets mentioned quite a lot on the podcast, yep. is an A7C shooter because in part, mm -hmm. I sent him your video of the little ripper that still rips. <laughs> uh, and he he made his choice for an A7C in part because of your because of your love for that camera and I think you're you yeah. you know you're still using it. I love it. So the twenty four to seventy two eight zoom, that's not it's not out there, I don't think, in terms of like most people again, it's one that people might look past because maybe it's a bit it's not a prime, it's a zoom. I mean it's two eight all the way through. Yeah. You think people look past me through that maybe one. you're just hurting my feelings. You think people why would people look past it? It's a great lens. Yeah, but I'm a primes guy. Right. Oh, so yes. like I, I was, so I think that's the thing is that like, for me, it's like zooms almost don't exist, not least because I shoot an M. So zooms kind of don't exist. Anyway. They don't exist. But even, even before that, yep. when I was on an A7, I had a 35 and, a, and an 85 and I yeah. would kind of like go between the two of those. Yeah. So I'm the 24 to 70 to eight sort of feels to me perilously close to kit lens territory. Yeah. And I think I'm being a snob. So change my mind and re-educate me and why this Yeah, let's great. talk about it. Let's talk about it. Um, you're not wrong to think that because that's your feelings and you're allowed to have them. But you're overlooking this lens. Um, mm. <laughs> this, this predominantly for me is a video lens. That's how it started because you can go really wide. You can vlog with it. You can, you know, hold your arm out and get enough of your body that it feels normal. But 70 is also um, enough reach that you could be across the street from something, zoom in, and the viewer can see what you're seeing. So it's a really nice range. And Sony mm. has also made this lens smaller with each edition and just so sharp and accurate throughout the range. It's incredible what they've done with this lens. I believe that Canon has a yeah. pretty good offering in this range as well, but... Yeah, 24 to 70. If I had to pick one lens to make all of my videos with, it'd be that one. Yeah. And it's a it's a tie between that and the 16 to 35 because the 16 to 35 mm -hmm. is just a bit wider for vlogging, but you can't mm -hmm. zoom in enough to like show your viewer what you're looking at in the world, I think. You could digitally do it, but 24 to 70 yeah. is such a staple. And I agree. I when I first started at The Verge, I was big on primes too, you know, mm -hmm. uh shooting stand-ups on the 35 or the 50 using the 100 for all of my b-roll and that was like it like i would go to events with like mm. those two lenses maybe the 24 um but then once we switched over to sony systems and we started using the 24 to 70 it was kind of all i had for a while on sony but i learned to love it it's it's really solid and they're getting smaller yeah. and smaller which is the best part yes no, if you if you can fit to, I mean, it's one of the things I love about the M system is just how small all those lenses are. Oh, they're and very I can, small. It's so cool. And like so you can sharp. just have like a tw yes, yes, all that contrast. I mean, they make you pay for it, but it's it's worth well, it. Well, yeah, like, <laughs> but you wouldn't, yeah, you couldn't even it's... dip your toe into that system without paying for it. So I feel like by buying the no. camera, you're signing up for everything else. You're making the bed, and you got to sleep in it. A thousand percent. It's entirely my fault. Like boo-hoo, Ian. <laughs> you had to spend that money on that Elmerit 28. Boo-hoo. Life, life so hard. Yeah. Um, I explained to Kai last week. I was like, 
you know, it's not that I live in some sort of like on a yacht and go around. It's it's that I got a bonus once and it was kind of like, right, this is the time. Yeah. <laughs> like we're either doing this right now <laughs> or this will never happen again. I was thinking about what my like dream big camera to buy would be actually last night. It was very late. I had traveled yeah. all day. I did not sleep well while I was out in California just because it was so dry. The desert's so dry. And so I was a little like loopy and I got into this like really great thought of, okay, if you ever make really good money and you have an opportunity to buy one really banging camera, what would it be? And I think I figured it out. I really Can think, I guess? Or... Yeah. Oh my God. Yay. I love a game. So, because thinking about what you've done over the years, because my next question I was going to ask you about was, was about stills versus video. Mm -hmm. So this is a nice kind of segue onto that. I feel like you do so much video work and so much like small kind of like got to move fast, got to get this in focus and whatever that I think you would potentially go completely the opposite direction in some ways. Okay. So I wonder whether you'd go Hasselblad uh -huh. because it's kind of like, and maybe like a 907 or something like that, because it's just the, the you know, the classic mm -hmm. kind of feel. Cause it's, mm -hmm. it's totally the opposite to what you often have to do, which is like move quickly, get the shot, move on to the next thing. Yeah. So I wonder whether that slowness might be what you would seek. So that would be my guess. <laughs> Dang, you're good. Or, or you're guess. right. But it, but it's the X2D. <laughs> Ah, okay. Yes. Yeah, because it's it's so ergonomic. I love the colors. I love the um, aspect ratio. Um, I hate the focusing system with a passion, which is why when I was having this conversation with myself last night, I thought by the time this happens to me, maybe there'll be an X3D um, mm -hmm. and the focusing will be better. But also those lenses. Oh my God. I just yeah. love the build of that camera. Yeah. The big con here is they are huge. They are huge and they are heavy. Yes. Um and I and I don't they're um they don't have great ISO performance in my experience. Right. Um okay. but I think that would be every time I've gotten one of those cameras in for review, I have felt a sort of peace. Like you were saying, mm -hmm. that I just don't get with other cameras. I love them, but their autofocus sucks. I said it. <laughs> no, it's um, it's funny. Do you know James Popsis, who does uh, YouTube videos about cameras? He's a British photographer who lives in Wales, and he's done a couple of videos about the Leica Q3 and the Q343. Yeah. Where he's like, it's he's like, a, it basically he's like, I don't want to say it's a toy, but if you were sat at a table with Fuji, Nikon, Sony, Canon people. Like and they're all talking about their banging autofocus. You would stay quiet, <laughs> just be like, yeah, you know, like yeah, this also has it, but That's it's not so kind of, good. <laughs> yeah, he's like, it, it's it's not for that, and yeah. I think they know that, right. you know. Um, but yeah, it's I don't know. I mean, I I don't have autofocus, so yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me have you heard have you heard the good news about zone focusing? <laughs> <'Cause>... <laughs> I've I've heard a lot about it. Yes. Um, mm. yeah. And, and truthfully, I haven't spent a ton of time with Leicas, so mm. th this could change. Um, I'm definitely far overdue for like some solid time with their systems. Um, mm. but, but right now that's, that's what it would be. Yeah. I was even yeah. looking at them. I don't really buy anything new. I hate buying anything mm. new. Um, so I was looking at used bodies last night and yeah, that's going to go on the vision board for 2025. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, all of mine have been used. I've never bought a new one. Yeah, like that way, that way, madness lies. It's just too. Oh my god! You know, it's, it's yeah. too much. It's like buying a new car. You like lose, I don't know, ten thousand dollars when you drive off the lot. It's it's just yeah. like I don't I don't need to like rip the cellophane off of something to love it. My stepdad just got um, a Leica CL, which is an APS-C body. Yeah. Um, with the L mount lenses, and we took some photos side by side with my camera and his camera. We were out for dinner and I mean like 90, 95% of the time, like that, the, the stuff that the big camera can do that the little one can't do, but he also gets autofocus. Like there's, you know, I suspect even shooting things in the dark or night scenes or whatever, you know, like the dynamic range is probably so good on that little camera. Yeah. There's probably not a lot that I can rescue that he can't. 
you know and yeah. if you expose it properly and the lenses are great absolutely so, yeah. absolutely yeah that, i agree i agree with that 100 yeah that's awesome yeah we we were out in california testing out the canon r1 earlier this week mm. and i got to talk with folks at canon on the product side mm. about why they went with 24 megapixels instead of 40 and above i mean this is their flagship mm. camera um and my argument was like you know flagship historically is like used to be like the most expensive camera it's got all of the best that any company has to offer and i said it's just mm. funny that your flagship doesn't have the you know the most bang and sensor quote unquote and their sure. reasoning was like you know it's it's all like trade-offs right like if we have uh the lower megapixel we can do a little bit better um high iso performance um we can mm -hmm. have faster readout speeds like we can have things that pros want and another point they made that was really good is a lot of people that use that camera are instantly sending their photos um to uh editors or databases you know their sports photographers their news yeah. photographers um they don't want huge file sizes you know they don't want yeah. all of these megapixels that is just you know more time um and not necessary and it's a it's a very good point it's a very good point um so i'm but but i'm wondering if that you know more megapixels is better thing like you know more is better I, i'm like will that ever die though like you know it's, i think that's just always going to be how people feel and see things and even myself so yeah we'll see no Exactly. I mean, I, I, you know, my M can shoot 60, but I shoot it mm -hmm. at 36 most of the time. Okay. And I think, and I have no, I have no evidence for this, but I think 36 kind of looks better. Yeah. And I, I don't know why. I wonder whether it is a light, you know, it's like a pixel binning, light catching yep. type of thing. Right. I just, they just, they feel, they feel a bit better, the dynamic range. I mean, they say on paper, the dynamic range is better. All yeah. I can say is like, yeah, I think it probably is a bit <laughs> and you yeah. know yeah that's that, that's often how i feel reviewing something it's like <laughs> yeah I, I guess i guess it's better is it better because you're telling me it's better i don't yeah. know <laughs> yeah so do you ever allow yourself obviously you know when the hasselblad arrives you'll do this all the time but do you go out and shoot stills very often or are you now after so long is everything a moving picture in your mind i shoot a lot of stills i mean i generally take photos all the time of everything yeah. but you know, that started because I'm such a visual person, as I was saying earlier, like I have to go to spaces that I w was thinking things to remember what I was thinking. Um, mm. But I've just always captured my life in photo and video, yeah. whatever camera I had, like if it was a photo camera, I was because way back when not all of our cameras also did video. Um, yeah. And and so whatever I had, I was using the document. So I do a lot of photos, but I don't really love to call myself a photographer um, because I don't mm. think about it so much as like a job and I'm not doing it to mm. print in an art book and I'm not doing it to hang yeah. it on a wall. Um, my mission is, is documentation. And so, so I consider yeah. myself more of a documentarian than a photographer. Um, it's all about just capturing a feeling and a moment and a memory for me. That's really nice. And actually, it was something I wanted to ask you about as well. All your videos, a lot of your videos at the moment, since you went independent, have been very kind of reviewsy and yeah. sort of looking at things and, 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 and looking at them through your lens and looking at them in your way, I think, for the first time, which is giving them a, a lovely color that's like standing out and they're different. And that's why you've got a button oh, so, so quick glad. and things like that, I think. Um, but do you think you'll ever make video essays or documentaries or series things like do you, do you have a inkling that you'd like to try some different formats yeah video essays no because i'm not a writer i i just i'm not like i'm not that eloquent <laughs> it's just not for me um i'll definitely keep doing reviews because i love them and they're my bread and butter mm -hmm. um but i want to start doing a lot more like vlogging and experience centered mm. things um yeah. and, and that's always been a part of my work but i want to start testing the audience if they're interested in just going somewhere with me and it's less about like me telling you that like these headphones were awesome on my way there and more about right. here's how i got there and here's what happened while i was there and who's here's what i met and so i'm going to be venturing mm. more into that i think 
But truthfully, I wake up every morning and I make what I want to make. And if someday that's something other than a review, I welcome that day. That's cool. Let's go down that path. So. No, that does sound nice. I think if it's organic and you just get there one day and then we find ourselves here now, then I think that's really nice. Um, we'll see if it and... works. All, all just an idea. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a concept. <laughs> Craig Mod is, a, you Craig may Maud. know. Yeah, M A M O D Mod. Um, he has lived in Japan now forever. And what you were just saying there about going somewhere and taking people with you. So he um, he has done these really lovely books of photography because for him a book is is the thing yep and he has a he has no he's built an audience online over a decade like way back before that seemed like a sensible thing to do uh, he's got like this explorers club that kind of you can be a subscriber and he does live zooms and you can dial in and see him doing stuff but he mostly does these walking um trips it's not even really it's like a holiday he's just he walks from like one end of japan to the other and takes weeks to do it and during that time he's done these podcasts i'll link them in the show notes where he um he records using uh stereo mics um just as he walks for like 15 minutes at a time and they're wonderful to tune into because there's just this sound of japan around him and like birds tweeting and like cars going by and little bits of chatter and stuff on the street it's really good to work to because it's 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 life and it's movement and it's language but it's not a language you necessarily speak so it's not distracting because yeah. you can't pick up on parts of it you know it's, it it's becomes musical in that way um but he's also got a wonderful way of writing and talking about stuff and it just strikes me that like that's your your love and passion of going like he he didn't ask any of his readers do you want me to walk a long way and i will like write you know sometimes he does these trips where he'll send a newsletter every day on the trip cool um you know, which I kind of actually think about. I stole. I do that for the kids when I'm traveling. I do the Daily Daddy. Oh, that's so cute. Hell yeah. It's so cool. Um, and uh, I did it recently when I was in Germany. I did uh, Papa aus Deutschland. I changed it a little bit. Um, Dude, I love that. But yeah. Yeah, it's great. Uh, everyone should do that when they travel for their family. Just do a little daily news because you can email your printer most likely and it will just pop out of the printer in the house and then awesome. they just they wake up to a newsletter. It's so cool. But yeah, he's he's done that kind of thing. So it might be yeah. it might be that you end up just like doing a mad hike or something and taking people taking a portion of your you I'm know, writing with you. down the email the printer thing. I really love that. It would be really cool. Uh, <laughs> this is my brain. It's just endless. I'm just mm. idea, 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 idea. Um, and they're yeah. all bad. And this is, this is the thing. Say your bad idea, say your bad idea, yeah. because out of a bad idea, like 20 great ideas come. Here's the bad idea. Yes. Um, if I can get the email address of like many people's printers, which is rare because less and less yes. people have printers sending yes. out something would be so cool. That would mm-hmm. be so cool. Yeah, because they also don't know it's coming. Yeah, it will just arrive, right? Like it'll it'll just turn up at their house. Um, and whether it's whether it's a printer or whether it's like turns out to be a mailing thing and you send it through the post. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah the, that's the, really cool. The post is is quite literally my love language. I love getting mail. Yeah. <laughs> yes, no, me too. It's it's the best thing, isn't it? Best. Like as a as a grown up, you become a kid straight away. Yeah, I'm a big postcard person. So when my grandma was alive. I sent her a postcard everywhere I went. Even if I was there for 24 hours, 12 hours, it didn't matter. I would find a way to get a postcard and get it to her. And when she passed, she had saved them all. And it was this beautiful um, journal of everywhere I had ever gone. Um, And now I do it with my partner and my sister and I send postcards. But I, I also think postcards are amazing because you have to buy them. So it means you have to like go to a store and interact with somebody. You have to write them, which makes you sit down and reflect on what you're doing. And then the post office is guaranteed to be the place that you travel that will not speak English nor accommodate you in any way. They do not give a fuck about you. They deal with way too many people all day and you will absolutely yeah. come away with a story. Um, so keep your chin up and get through it you will yes uh, but yes it's and and you'll really see the local culture <laughs> yes yeah yeah no that that's 
that's absolutely true. They they will look at you in a way it's like, oh no, why are you here? Yes. <laughs> oh my God, the stories I can tell you from the insides of post office around the world. Um, yeah. Yeah, some of my best. Not my best moments, but Have my best ever... stories. Sure. <laughs> Have you ever taken part in post crossing or seen the website post crossing? No, I don't know what that is. So post crossing is very old internet. I am wearing my free highlights now fully um, but I used to work for Moo.com the printing company and one of our products was postcards and we could if you worked for the company you could basically print as many things as you wanted and so I used to because I was such a keen photographer and I'd, I'd got my first SLR and I was you know enjoying like my Nikon D40 I was like I'm hot shit I can take photos at 50 mil you know with a 1.8 lens woohoo let's go great camera I should probably get one before they all break it was really cool but I was making my own postcards and I came across post crossing which is a thing where you share, you basically submit your address to this database and then you you send people cards and the addresses are all like obfuscated but shared with the person who's going to send you a postcard. So it's a very old internet, like pre-Twitter kind of or early Twitter sort of ideal of like, you know, the internet was still a little bit hippy-dippy. Yeah. And so you just send these postcards. And I thought making my own postcards was really, really cool. But what used to happen was like you would, you would see... Not complaints as such, because they were people involved in a postcard trading forum online. <laughs> but they were disappointed that they weren't <laughs> receiving a postcard from London because yeah. it was a postcard of like a pigeon that I thought was cool. And they're like, that's not what I wanted. What I wanted no. was a postcard, you know, an you awful touristy postcard of Buckingham Palace, you know, like unless yeah. you're designing your own horrific. Yeah. But yeah, post crossing probably still exists could probably start doing that again yeah i'm i'm trying to figure out like a merch situation and i want it to be mm. very based in like exploration and outdoors and oh, cool. oh my god the pinterest boards i have for this they're yeah. gorgeous masterpieces if i do say so myself um but something <laughs> i've been thinking about is i love like when you go to a restaurant and they give you like a postcard um at the end mm. and you can Often what I do with those is if I'm with a friend that's from out of town or something, I'll like steal it away and then I'll write a thank mm. you note on it and send it to them. Um, but oh, nice. I would love to do some sort of like postcard or something, a little tactile in that. But time yeah. will tell. that will be super fun. I actually received my first piece of post from a listener. Oh, my God. Amazing. What was it? Yeah. It's um, it's from a guy, Tom, who who listens, who's... Hey, Tom. He was my first... Yeah, he was my first Patreon. He lives. Oh my in, god, Tom! Um, hell yeah, dude! Yeah, that guy. Um, and he's done. He's done me a print of one of his pictures. So I have to. I'm, we've talked about this. Like I'm going to return the favor. But um, oh, so cool. Check, check that out. Oh my god, Tom! Nice, dude. Wait, is the water like real nice and soft? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh it's really God. beautiful, like a long exposure yes. uh, type thing. Yeah, it's really lovely. Oh, that's it's a beautiful so cool. print as well. Yeah, so Tom, you killed it. And I've I got love some it. Little, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've got some little glowy hologram stickers. And uh, yeah, oh, he's even done, because he's got a little so forth look. He's even done the Instax. <gasps> yeah. I've got an Instax version oh, as well. So, cool. so yeah, stickers and things of Tom. I will put him in the show notes now, you see, because he's been mentioned. So he gets to go in the show notes. Um, Hell yeah, Tom. I'm doing, yeah, I'm doing a thing called um, Focus Points with him. Uh, so anyone who signs up gets to gets to be in a little YouTube short where I ask them some questions that are designed to kind of like solve some of photography's biggest questions cool. uh, and answer those biggest questions. In fact, I could try them out on you. Uh, okay. when we've done your last lens we'll try them out and we'll see how they go and then you i can be you we, we test drove them with you i feel like you're the right the right person to test it with i am i am endlessly down for a test drive please make me the guinea pig cool well we'll round out we'll do the last lens and then we'll run in with some focus points and then i'll let you get back to your life and your mic stand will not have to to survive anymore <laughs> <laughs> no, any it's, longer it's not than even it a mic stand my mic is currently in a, um, a C stand um, knuckle mm -hmm. on my desk. Oh yeah, uh, leaning against my computer. So it's real. That's, it's very on brand. <laughs> it is on brand. It's, it's totally on brand. I'm, you know, if that's my brand, I'm honored. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Like it's it's functional. I love it. Sometimes, sometimes functional. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. 
Heath Robinson. Um, so lens number three. Yeah, what did I is say? Is a Nikkel twenty four two eight. Yeah. yeah, you see, honestly, your expression changes as soon as you're like, oh, yeah, I love this one. I love that lens. I love that lens so much. The the Nikromat FT, um, 1968 all metal body camera. I got it for, mm -hmm. I think, $8. It was definitely sub $10 at a Goodwill mm -hmm. when I was in 10th grade in my hometown. Wow. It was my first kind of, you know, fully manual film camera. And I fell in love with it. I took it everywhere with me for the next, I don't know, you know, 15 years or whatever. And I still take it a lot of places with me now. And it came with a 50 millimeter on it. Of course it did. And I, one of the first things I bought on eBay was that lens. Um, and I put that on and it has never come off. At one time I tried a different lens on it and I hated it. It's just... I have used that camera so much. It has traveled with me so much with that lens on it that I see mm. how that lens sees. Like if I have right. that camera on my neck, I know exactly what the frame's going to look like before I put it up to my eye. Um, yeah. It's got sand in it. It's gotten soaked. It is, I'm, <laughs> it is probably getting real foggy at this point. I need to like pay good money to have right. it cleaned. Um, but it is just, it's just home. It's home for me, you know, yeah. in this really beautiful way. And even talking about it, I just get all like warm inside because that camera and that lens are, they're everything. They're everything. So, and yeah. if I ever get stuck, I'll... like, I'm like, what camera should I bring on this trip? I just bring that camera and I know I'll be good. Oh, that's brilliant. And that, that's exactly the kind of conversations, like seeing you go a little misty eyed. Yeah. talking about that lens and just thinking about the images you've made with it i'm the same with 35 millimeter because the camera i used most growing up was a 35 field of view so i think that's just yeah. to me that's what a photograph looks like yeah um well that's wonderful yeah yeah i love it so much um yeah and it now has this like real like squeak to it when <laughs> you're focusing it's like <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah but that's that's okay we'll, we'll we'll get her all patched up real soon and uh be back at yeah. it yeah the the meter also recently went on that camera and you know i mm. used to be able to stick a piece of tin foil in the battery compartment and then it would just like work um so i don't know maybe my piece of tin foil in there is just a little funky right now and i gotta swap her out but uh but yeah, yeah. that's my babe that's my babe with ektar wow. 100 oh my god yeah that is it babe mm. yeah i can't go down that foam rabbit hole becca I can't do it. I've got to, like, it's too dangerous a place to go. Instant film's bad enough. Polaroids. <laughs> no, I think... Two, £2.50 a shot. <laughs> yeah, it's expensive. But um, mm. I, think, I think everyone should go down that rabbit hole at some point. Yeah. Because it, it, it is, it's the foundation, you know? It's, yeah. it's where it all started. And it's a, I, I use film now as a uh, leisure activity because I do so much mm -hmm. photo and video for work that it doesn't really feel yeah. leisurely. But when I pick up a film camera, it's like, it's, it's, it's different enough that it feels not like work. Yes. Yeah. It's the same for me with the instant film, actually. The, the I2 yeah. is manual, so I can do, you like do the enough I2? that I can, I do. I really love it. Yeah. I make mistakes with it all the time. Yep um because i primarily because i trust it's light meter too much yeah you do um but I, so as you soon as i of... stopped using their light meter everything got better yeah yes it it does i just need to remember like the other day basically the sun coming through the trees was incredible and i went outside i dashed outside to do it and got a couple of shots and i was like yeah you know like f16 they're bangers yeah. and uh 15 all, minutes later drying on my desk yeah well yeah 40 minutes later it was just like no it was all over and oh just, man like, oh it's yeah basically, it's basically that one's not too bad because i i kid myself that i've exposed for the sky so yeah. you know that that one the kind of the sky looks all right but like at the weekend when i was doing it myself like the, the camera is blurring it unhelpfully but you know, know like that looks properly exposed but yeah it's just it's cool it's such a great lens it's so sharp yep. and the rendering is really really lovely yep. um i just need to kind of calibrate my my understanding of the light meter better yeah. basically for, for more conditions it's funny you brought this up i just pulled mine back out last weekend we had some friends in town mm. we were gonna go walk through town and have breakfast and i was like you know what this is this is gonna be perfect i put um what is it sx 
60 what's the older film 70 70 yeah. oh it's close yeah, 60, yeah. um <laughs> i put that put that in and um i my problem is i always use my own light meter and exposure is mm -hmm. fine but the green cast i get with polaroid yes. film what am i doing wrong so i think it's just there a lot of the time yeah. but one i one There's thing i found I yeah so we'll need to organize an episode where you come back on and we'll get ben fratinale on because oh my God, I would love i've had a, he's so cool um and because i get it a lot but i think the most the most true to life color i've ever had with a polaroid camera is when i take the photo obviously you put it in a dark place immediately but if you're wearing like a little um like a patagonia -y type vest or a zip, a jacket, something with a zippy pocket that's close to your body yeah i think they're so temperature sensitive I, yes i think that's partly where it comes from as well i've been doing that i i've been putting it in the chest mm. pocket yeah yeah um okay i you're right because when it's cold it actually is worse um yeah okay i think it's that because those ones are the where i it's most obvious when you underexpose as well yes. so all the all the underexposed areas on these pictures that i'm looking at now um are slightly green but that's because i took them because it was just before i was starting work so i took them and i just shoved them i've got one of the little polaroid boxes on my desk so mm. i can just put the pictures in to kind of keep them out of the light and i put them in there and i didn't put them somewhere warm or just keep them on my body and i think you know i'm not it sounds mad but like if i'm wearing something with a zippy pocket like that almost needs to be the uniform when i'm using my polaroid camera yeah. so that i keep them nice and warm at the right kind of temperature because they are they are very sensitive to temperature you know or just shoot black and, white. and they just bleach that too yeah i i yeah, do, at least they I won't do be. love i do love the the amount of contrast and mm. just oh my god a perfectly exposed black and white photo on a polaroid is just gold for me yes yeah well let me tell you about so this is at some point we'll have to catch up in, and I can you can have a go with my M if you haven't had a chance to use an M yet right and I'll let yeah. you try the 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 Zeiss 35 to 8 that I have because that in black and white those Zeiss lenses yeah render black and white oh my like yeah phew, it's really good I'm a color person and even I'm like no hang on this it turns my head yeah it's really good there, there's something something about the feeling it's just really amazing. And I don't shoot a lot of black and white 35 millimeter. I used to mm. shoot Ektar 100 all summer, and then I'd switch to black mm -hmm. and white for the winter. Um, yeah. Just because oh. that's what fit. Yeah. And, and the sun goes down earlier, and, you know, at night you can, like, yeah, get yeah. away with a lot more with black and white. And, mm -hmm. um, and so I did that for a few years, and I started to get better. And then I really – that was, that was like, right after college. That was a while ago now. Um, I haven't revisited black and white in a while. The Nikon ZF that I've been mm. using a lot of – has a black and white switch yes. that I love and I flip to that and it's it's been it's been really nice for when you know the sun's hitting hard but um mm. but yeah I I want to get back I want to get shooting that some more I'm gonna I this is this after this I'm gonna order some black and white Polaroid film um since I got the yes. i2 back out there we go yeah it's gonna be fun yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. do that well thank you so much for talking to me this no is worries. amazing thanks for having will me. you will you oh gosh absolute pleasure this is a treat like I no, joked that the no, show no, could end after I speak to Jason Man uh, Momoa, but actually I could just add, like, <laughs> I, I, I've, I've spoken to some people I really, really love. Like it's awesome. in the front of this book next to the newsletter ideas is the list of people. And I've checked off people that I just never thought I'd get to talk to. Oh, right. Like just dude, like, so you're, cool. and, you know, yeah, you're on that list for sure. That's like Darren, like James, you know, like these, yeah. these people I never thought I'd get to talk to, let alone like Doug, whose photography I admired and, you know, people like my mate Dan and like yeah. Dave, just everyone, Ali, for God's sake. Yeah. But none of them have had the privilege of being the first person to take the prime lenses focus points test. Okay. Which is designed to understand you fully and holistically as a photographer. Oh, so no. are, you, okay. are you, these are quick fire questions. I encourage you not to overthink them. Okay. And this will just this will give us an insight into Becca Versace, like Versace but far away is yes. soul. Oh gosh. Okay, okay, yeah, look right into my soul. This is all in all in Becca's mind palace. <sighs> Becca's okay. mind palace. Oh man, it is messy. Let's go. Okay, there's ten of these. Let's go. So what makes a good photo? Story. Describe your style in five words. 
dad just got a new camera i think that's nice six. i love that that will take that it's the first one with this prototype best camera ever made that's an impossible question that's why it's on the list nikon ft best focal length 24 millimeters people or places people Best place to make a photo? Hmm, somewhere you're curious about. Okay. Lightroom or Capture One? Lightroom. Is a phone camera a real camera? Yeah. Polaroid or Instax? Polaroid. <laughs> yeah, good. And black and white or color? Ektar 100 film. There we go. Becca, <laughs> you are the first person to complete the focus points questionnaire. Yes. Thank you, so much. you you did incredibly. Okay, I did say Nicromat FT. Yeah, that is the best camera ever made. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cuz yeah. sometimes I cuz there's like the FT1 is way or FT2 is like way more popular and sometimes I even mess up my own. Like I'm like, "Wait, is it just FT?" But it is FT. Um, cuz there's the FTN yeah, is it the FTN? See, I always mess with... Hold on. I'm about to buy another This one. is great. This is exactly what I wanted it to do. <laughs> See, that's not... I even have the earlier version of that. That's why I think I have just the FT. I wish I had it with me. Um, yeah. Yeah, it is the FT. It's the first one. Okay, sorry. Well, you've been incredible. And this is a real... This is like a, a prime lane, lenses for the ages episode wow, man. I think. Um, <laughs> I, I'm honored to be here and and thank you for being um endlessly in my dms about rico cameras and cameras at large I really appreciate it and and I it it I was so stoked that I finally got to mention you in a video uh, because all of your hard work just had to be noted um they are great cameras you're so right um but it sounds like you've moved on to bigger and better systems well, yeah, I so I would have kept it because I still think if I could only ever have one camera, like if it was a desert island nonsense thing where you can yeah. only have one, it's so small and so versatile mm -hmm. and I just loved it so much. And so much of that, so much of a decision like that is is not about whether it would be the absolute best thing. It's just whether or not for you, you would love, love shooting it. And I always loved picking it up mm -hmm. and I always loved using it. But when I got the M, it was so different. It goes, you know, full circle, right back to learning new things. And yeah. it was so different and it was so, it was going to challenge me so much. And, and within, within a few weeks of having it, I could just tell that this, this is making me better. I think yeah. this is, this is stretching me because I know that if I can do it with a manual focus lens on a rangefinder, then I can do it with anything. Yep. That I've got that confidence now that I can pick it up. So my sister-in-law has just gone to Japan and she's bought a GR3 to take with her because she's never had a proper camera before. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to help her. She's, you know, she's saying like the her friend's sunset photos look better than hers. And I'm like, no, they don't. They're junk food, HDR, hypersaturated. This is real food. <laughs> and I'm trying to teach her about how much is left in the highlights exposed you know exposed for the highlights and how much is in the shadows sorry and so you, you're yeah. teaching her actually how to use the <laughs> this tool. this is so funny because this is when i would say yeah just take your phone out for the sunset but everything else well that <laughs> yeah i want i want her to hopefully enjoy using it because whether she comes back and she sells it immediately or whatever i want her to at least have had a go you know with it with this incredible tool and hopefully hopefully enjoy using it well if she's selling it let me know uh, for how much deal all right well thank you so much um i've loved this it's been brilliant let's yeah, let's get you. that podcast festival in scotland oh my god yeah or let me just let me just come for vacation let me come do some hiking we've got a spare room there's always oh, room yes music to my ears yeah. it's incredible. Yeah. well thanks so much brilliant. for having me it was really a joy to be here and um thank you listeners i hope you enjoyed this and shout out to tom all right later back i see you bye thanks again to becca for being on the show today i loved that conversation it was brilliant if you liked it don't forget that you can subscribe to this podcast wherever you listen 
be that Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, YouTube Music, everywhere. We're, we're pretty much impossible to avoid at this point. And you can also subscribe to the Midweek Newsletter. That goes out on a Wednesday. And you can find out more about that and our Patreon at ianfarrell.com slash sign dash up. There is a link to that in the show notes. So get outside, grab a camera, go out, follow Becca's advice, get outside with some tech and make some great photos, send them to me and uh, I'll see you next week. <laughs>